save your teeth. Teeth will come out or teeth will fracture. If a tooth comes out, save it, put it in your own mouth or put it in like a glass of milk. Get to the hospital within like an hour, hour and a half, uh -huh. and then you can actually replant it back in. Yeah. You can crush a guy's skull by stepping on him if you do it hard enough on a hard surface. Yeah. A lot of times, that blunt force trauma, especially at your level, you can cause bruising to the organs and all the stuff on the inside. What's up, Gameology? We're here for Experts React, and my name is Noah Flader. I'm a martial artist and actor. Hey, Dr. Jordan Wagner here, board certified emergency doctor here. What are we doing? We are watching Yakuza. Oh, nice. Let's get into it. For the record, I've never played the game. Have <laughs> you? No, I've never played the game. This looks crazy. It's brutal. I don't know how those guys are still standing from getting hit with a bat like that. I just want to know, like, how your hands are not just destroyed after all those hits. If you're hitting? Yeah. My hands are totally conditioned to be able to do that. I don't know about the headbutt. Wow. <laughs> but you train so much where there's a lot of martial arts that have a lot of hand conditioning or Got body it. conditioning. Got it. So you build like that callus on your the knuckles. Bone itself. And yeah. All that, dude. Yeah. We get, we get so many injuries. People try to like hit you and they hit with like boxers fracture. Oh, every time. I've had twice and then twice oh, on the same. Even, <laughs> even a professional sometimes yeah, you get it. I was a dumb teenager getting into fights. Right, in when high you're school. younger. I always tell people, I'm like, you got two big ones, use them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Nice combo. A lot of the times, if you're actually like hitting for real, I would do open hand. Got it. Everything open right. hand. You're gonna have a lot less injuries inside of here, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. It's dispersion, and it's, you got two big bones behind you going in that direction, right? Just open hand techniques, yep. yeah. Oh! Elbow. We call those elbow destructions. That is actual technique in Filipino systems and um, different martial arts that they use where they'll guide the punch or the fist into the elbow. Got so it. they'll hit or they'll cover. And a lot of times we talk about, you know, if we get into a fight, I can't get into a fight anymore because I'm a black belt and all that right. stuff, right? Yep. So if, like, hey, I have my hands up and I cover, mm -hmm. but actually what I'm doing is I'm trying to guide his fist into my elbow and right. I'm just having my hands up. Right. I won't get in as much trouble, right. but his hands are going to be all smashed up. So for people who don't know, yeah. why can I get into a fight? but you can't. People can sue for whatever reason, but you're a trained professional yep. at what you do. Yep. <clears throat> They're gonna look at you and you have way higher percent chance of going to jail for whatever reason. So you're, you're a deadly weapon. I had some issues when I was 17. I actually got pulled in by the police and everything. It was wow. a whole thing. And wow. um, I got into a fight in high school and I put the guy in the hospital and I got arrested in class. The police pulled me out of the class. And first thing that they asked was, are you a black belt? Well, and okay. I'm like, I am, I'm yeah. a third degree black belt. And they're like, okay, well in court, this is what the judge would say is, how long have you been training? 15 years. So you've trained 15 years on how to be able to protect yourself. So does it look like it's premeditated and or did you exert an Got X it. amount of force, Got right? It. So it just, it all looks bad. It so all just, looks bad. Just don't get into a fight. Back to Yakuza. <laughs> Oh, suplex oh, into the wall? That's nice. dope. <laughs> I like that, that was really cool. I don't know what like the energy around them okay. is. Is that nails? Nails to the face. Jesus I don't know what, Christ. I don't think I you feel like that would hurt that. my hand. Right, I don't think that would the be nails. possible. The elbows are oh, raw. The break. elbow hyperextended, it could snap it right out of That's joy. actually very easy to yeah. do. Well, what happens is you have your Electronon, you just snap that right off and then it can hyperextend right out. It's a pretty easy yeah. one to break, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's just like this little piece that it actually looks like a little cup. Yeah. That, so it can articulate. So mm -hmm. if you just go off the other way, it's a snap. <laughs> Double fist. Nice. That actually caused more like barotrauma to your tympanic membranes, to your eardrums. It would be better to do open palm. Exactly. Yeah. Especially the eardrum. Oh! Palm. There you go. <laughs> the open hand hits. That's how I would hit somebody. Yeah. That's another. I feel like use. that would be harder than the elbow. It's a much harder to do yeah. because it doesn't articulate the same way as the elbow joint does. Yeah. And it's, it's attached differently. And you have so many, you got your medial lateral collateral ligaments, you got your ACL, your PCL. So so many things are intact. I've seen it. Yeah. And we actually have hyperextension injuries. You actually worry about the blood vessels on the other side. So we're not really worried not about sure. the joint itself. We right. can fix that. Right. But you're worried about Oops. your femoral vein, femoral arteries that are coming down, your popliteal veins and arteries. On the sword? Wait, how is he blocking it? What? Oh. He has something on his hands. Yeah, I can't catch it. I wouldn't go bare knuckle against a sword, though. Nope. 
those headbutts are super efficient. Your forehead is the strongest part of your head. Correct, it's thickest. Yeah, yeah exactly. so we drop our chin, and if somebody's throwing punches yep. at you, let them meet at the forehead, they'll oftentimes break their hand. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny. Like We know it from a safety mechanism of falling traumas to the head for like kids. So parents are always freaking out. My kid smacked his head. They come in, this big hematoma of their forehead, and it's like, Actually, it's fine to hit on the front. That's it's the, the side of the heads that are like more thin and more dangerous to hit. And I'm like, use that as a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You do have to be careful. There are sinuses, sinus pockets here. So the bone does get a little bit thinner. Bleeding blood out of his mouth, just vomiting blood. This is intense fighting. Like, this, this is a crazy a fight. Fighting. The bat is the crazy one. I feel like it's done. There we go. Oof. That guy's done. He's not getting up. And we got an umbrella. Oof. I like that, nice. the pull-in yeah. kick, that was cool. Jesus. Yeah. You can crush a guy's skull by stepping on him if you do it hard enough on a hard surface. Is that a bowling ball? I don't know. That would really hurt though, really if someone threw yeah, a bowling ball at your ankle. Done. Oh, nice. How easy or not easy is a move where you're on one foot and you're, you're hitting and then without putting your foot down, now you gotta go again. Like how much force is in the second one? So for an average martial artist, person that probably has only trained like five years, it's a very difficult move. Not many people could pull that off. Yeah. I could definitely generate enough power to be able to do damage there. Honestly, it's not that difficult to generate a lot of concussive force. Yep. You watch a lot of the, like, the Bruce Lee videos where he does like the one inch punch, mm -hmm. and it's just practicing that relaxed like whip motion, but it, it generates a lot of that concussive force inside mm -hmm. once you understand the relaxation in the whip. But Got it's it. the same with the head kick. It's not that hard. Got it. You don't yeah. need a big wind up. You just boom. No. Once you have like that whipping movement, yeah. it's landing it. That's the tricky part. Bleeding Do you ever brain? see a guy in a suit? Like he's all bleeding and you're like, okay, I gotta ask what happened. Not, <laughs> not normally. Not normally. If one of these guys showed yeah. up to the hospital, they'd be, they'd be like, of course, what's we going on? Yeah, yeah. So, and actually it's always like the, Every staff member's like, what's the story behind? Like, yeah, you know, everybody wants to know. Happened. But anybody in a suit, you do want to know the story. Most of the time, their suit, it's usually alcohol. Usually. It's usually that makes not. Sense. They were out clubbing or partying yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah. That would hurt. That would hurt. That would hurt. Ribs are supposed to, are, are able to bend because of the way that they're attached, but you could definitely cause some rib fractures with that. I feel like it's easy to crack ribs. It happens so a small. lot in training. Yeah. yeah. And healing your ribs is like it's one of horrible. the worst in injuries, yeah. yeah. We tell every patient that a rib bruise yeah. or a muscle strain is the exact same pain as a broken rib because yeah. you're always breathing, you can't splint it, there's no cast you're putting on it. Yeah. Oh! That could be death. It could. That depends. Could be he, death. he was direct down, so there's no snapping, but you can have compressive force, right. which can cause compression fractures of the vertebrae. Right. That thing could be hollow. You know, I train more than the average person, but like I could pick up a sign and hit somebody with that. It's more like him picking somebody up one handed and just throwing them across. That's the crazy part. <laughs> Oof. Oof. It's like the Jeez. wind up. <laughs> Just like a baseball bat again with the fly. Right. Oh, now we can impale him. Yep. Oh, jeez. Remember, don't remove the objects. Leave them in. Don't take them out. Ooh. I'm loving the camera movement too. There's a lot of really dynamic camera movement. Those tasers I've never seen injuries from, but we get uh, the barbs that the police officers shoot into people that oh, have the yeah. wires attached yeah. to it. So we have to take them out. So, <laughs> I've so never that, thought about who takes them yeah, out. Yeah, we have to take them out. And it's not a fun process. Literally, we just take either we grab it with our fingers or a little tool and we just rip it out. Because it's like a hook, right? So it's got yeah. a barb on the end. So it's got some tissue caught because of the potential that you can cause more injury. That's why a police officer brings it to us. So if we do cause an issue, we can fix it. I used to train with uh, tasers that are shaped like knives. Oh. Yeah, so it's right. really intimidating when it's turned on. Of course. But we're training knife fighting, and if you get hit, you're gonna feel it. Right, it's a zinc versus yeah. like the impaled objects. It's in you, yeah. and now the electricity is a button. It's like Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, just- Is that like a little firecracker? Firecracker yeah. right in the face. I'm sure 4th of July you got We've a seen lot a lot of, of like <laughs> yeah. explosive injuries, yeah. Most of the time it's somebody's hands because they hold on to it too long. <laughs> yeah, they explode hands off or fingers or just bad last I weekend. couldn't work in the hospital, dude. I'd just be shaking my head all the yeah, time. Yeah, there's, uh, you see a, a different side of humanity. <laughs>
<laughs> but there's always some place for him to go. And I will give a caveat. I work at a major trauma center, so right. not every ER right. that you see down the road is seeing all of this. Right, right. You know, most of it's medical, but we see a lot of just trauma, trauma. Jesus. Yeah. This might not be appropriate to say on camera. I don't know. Just the stupidity of people. Yeah, it happens. We do. Yeah, the we, common we have the capacity stuff. to do a lot of stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's just usually after the fact that the, the stupid moment was like, why did I do that? Yeah. A lot of us have been in those moments where you do something stupid. I've never know, held a firecracker and blew off my hand. <laughs> have you? I've never had it. I, I've <laughs> shot bottle rockets when I was a kid, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I was the kid who put it in a bottle. But again, hindsight, it's probably not the smartest thing to do. Were you trying to shoot at your buddy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Next clip. <laughs> Ooh, knife. knife right to the hand. Uh, You'd be surprised that that little thing can cause a lot of damage. You puncture a hollow organ or solid organ in the abdomen. You gotta go to the OR and get cut open. One of the techniques that we were taught, and um, I trained with some guys that trained with a lot of, yeah, yeah. special force guys, yeah. it's the twist. Twist, yeah, yeah, rip. Because if you go in, slice, and then come out, it's such a nice, smooth cut that it actually can almost seal itself. Right. Versus if you rip, you're causing so much destruction that it's just gonna be a hole now. And it's how many injuries can you guys fix at once? It's a priority. Right. So we'll see, we'll have somebody come in as a trauma and a leg is gone, right? Tourniquet it, deal with it after, make sure that they're breathing, they got a pulse, all these other things, right. and then go back to the injuries. Ooh, I feel like you got time to move away from a massive sledgehammer. An apple in his face? Yeah. <laughs> because maybe a jaw dislocation, maybe a jaw fracture. Teeth. Save things. your teeth. So you, you get a lot of punches to the face, you get a lot of knees to the face. Teeth will come out or teeth will fracture. If a tooth comes out, save it, put it in your own mouth or put it in like a glass of milk. Glass of milk? Yeah, put it in a glass of milk, get to the hospital within like an hour, hour and a half, uh -huh. and then you can actually replant it back in. Wait, yeah. why milk? Milk, because it's, uh, it's got enough of the uh, proteins and it's a balanced solution. It has to be cow's milk because we live in LA. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's almond milk, yeah, almond milk. milk. You know, actually that's a great question. <laughs> you know, the studies were actually on cow's milk. Okay. Yeah, that is a great question. <laughs> Broken face, okay. Oh my God. It's called a Lafort fracture when the face actually goes straight in. Right. How many times have you had a broken nose, ever? I've never had a broken nose. God, how many times have you given a broken nose by accident? <laughs> by accident. We've had a few yeah. around us. Not from me, yeah, but yeah, yeah I've, I've seen a few for sure. We Messed get so up. many broken noses, it's just like, just snap it back. Really? No anesthesia, just real quick. Yeah, because yeah, if you wait too long, the swelling prevents it. And the then swelling. you have to have it fixed in a couple of weeks with a ear, nose, and throat surgeon. And then you gotta re-break it, right? Yep. Yeah, that's no fun. So you, you punch, you're kicking, and it's a lot of blunt force trauma. Yeah. A lot of times, that blunt force trauma, especially at your level, you can cause bruising to the organs, and bruising to the mesentery and all the stuff on the inside. One so. of the fights I got into when I was in high school were messing around guys being stupid with me, and I kick him in the leg. He didn't come into school for two weeks, and yes. then um, he went to the hospital to check it, and I caused a blood clot in his leg. Oh, got it, yeah. yeah and so that the, could have reached his heart and everything. Right, so yeah. the blood clots do the fact that you cause so much swelling yeah. that decreases blood flow to get back out, which then pool blood. But yeah, it happens. Freak accidents happen all the time. I was scared shitless. Yeah. Thought I almost killed my other buddy. God damn. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Concussion is just based off of the brain tapping the skull. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's so easy just to yeah. like have that little. Yeah, it's a coup, counter coup movement. So yeah. a lot of times you would actually get a lot of bruising to the back just because the, the force of the brain going mm -hmm. and smacking your skull on the other mm -hmm. side and then coming back. Yeah. I remember even when I played soccer in college and I had two concussions. They're like, one more, you're no more. Oh, really? Like I used wow. to, I, I, you know, I got hit in the head, that sort of thing. And I yeah. saw stars and you're like, oh, it's actually a real thing. Superman punch. Okay, yeah, yeah, nice. There's a lot of power that can be generated from yeah, that. Still. Got it. It was a movie, Best of the Best, back in the day. Those are my instructors. I love that movie. This Simon is my favorite. Simon and Philip Reed, those are my instructors. Awesome. Yeah. They did a, they always, the commentators would say, uh, flying back knuckle, like yeah. spin move. And I, I just love the way they call these moves. That's awesome you've seen Best of the Best, oh, I love them, oh yeah. Those are the guys that gave me a career. Cool. They got me in entertainment, nice. yeah. <laughs> A lot of martial arts schools, especially for like your black belt testing or something, you'll have to learn how to fight or spar against multiple opponents yeah. at once. So if you understand what all four people or five people are doing at once, you can kind of gauge it in that 
millisecond because yep. fighting doesn't take seconds to happen. Right. It doesn't take three seconds for me to punch you. Right. It's a half a second, right? So if you can calculate the room and what's happening, you have a better percentage of protecting yourself. Right. And at the end of the day, in a real life situation, you're like, what can I do to get out of this situation? Yep. It's not I'm gonna stay around in a circle and just keep fighting people as they come. It's how much damage can I inflict in a shortest period of time and get getting out. out. Yeah. Those sidekicks yeah. are brutal. I feel like you because know, you also have like a pushing power to it as well, right? Versus like a rotary. There's movement. two ways to throw your kicks, two main ways is one, that's more like a battering ram. Yep. Where you're driving through. Yep. And then you have more one that's more like a whip. Yep. I like trying to combine the both together. Got it. You'll feel it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but when you focus more on the driving and the push of yep. a kick yep. or a hit, it, you lose that concussive force. Got it. Every time I see flying kicks, I think of uh, blood sport. You make some good yes. band band like flying kicks. They say the flying sidekick was created by the Koreans to kick guys off of horses. Uh, I don't know how true it is, yeah. but it's been a consistent theme. Yeah. A lot of people say it. That was super fun. Yeah, that was crazy. That was just brutal. I loved it. There were a lot of great martial arts combinations, a lot of kickboxing. I feel like my hands would be sore after punching that many guys. I feel like <laughs> if I had to punch even just one guy, my hands would be <laughs> Just, I'd be bleeding and I'd be done and be like, I need to get out of here and run. But that was a lot of awesome gameplay. Um, there was just a lot of trauma that was going on. If you guys want to check me out, you guys can follow my Instagram at Noah underscore Plater. And check me out, Dr. Jordan Wagner, on my YouTube channel at Dr. ER. If you want to check out more videos like this, check out Gameology on YouTube and Facebook. What's up, Gum? Uh, Gameology. Gumbology. Gumbology. Yeah. I can't speak. I'm Dr. Jordan Ward. I'm a Werner. <laughs> Sorry, one more time. On Gameology, experts react on Facebook and Instagram. They have an Instagram.